There are definitely schools of thought in game design. I think they're less formal than you'll find in a lot of other mediums. Uh, a lot of times we don't have labels for them. Uh, what's really funky is a lot of times they're, they can be very compatible with each other. And I remember, this was true even years ago, uh, there was a talk by Judd, Doug Church coming out of the Looking Glass School of Design about emergent behaviors. And he said at the start of it, probably for two minutes straight to make the point, this is about those kinds of games. It's about how emergence is cool. It's not about linear story. Those kinds of games are cool too. I don't, I'm not saying they should go away. And he had to really try to make that clear so that people weren't hostile and just like stopping listening from what he was trying to say. And I think you still see a lot of those divisions in the different parts of game development, right? So PC and console tend to cling together. Uh, there used to be a divide between them, less so now. I think because they both feel like they're under attack by free-to-play <laughs> and casual and Facebook games, right? And some of the uh, lighter casual mobile games. So now you're starting to see kind of that divide. Um, and it's really unfortunate because honestly, I think there are things to learn across the board and the more you can understand how great games are designed in another area, the more it can influence your design. Like, uh, I think there's a big future, although it's challenging, in emergent behavior in MMOs, right? And, and where is the line between the emergent behavior of the AI in an MMO versus the emergent behavior of people in an MMO, right? Which is traditionally where we get the chaos in MMOs. It's from the people. But the, the environment could be chaotic too. It doesn't have to be a theme park attraction where all the NPCs and, and mobs are doing the same thing all the time on a schedule, right? And, and, and Star Wars Galaxies started to try to get at that. A lot of Raph Coster's work starts to get at that. Um, but I think that somewhere, uh, there's an understanding that can be more holistic about the various methods we have to, to influence players, right? Whether it's to influence them to group together, to laugh or to cry or anything else, right? And I think that uh, it's interesting also to see people's arcs over time, to see like Ken Levine kind of go away from emergence and more toward narrative, right? Uh, so I think it's just, it's, it's really fluid and we, in some ways are better off not defining ourselves more into categories, but I do wish that it would be a little less combative than it is.